So, welcome back to the course on uh, blockchain. Uh, in the last uh, lecture, we have discussed about uh, this uh, Bitcoin mining procedure and uh, we have looked into the consensus protocol in um, uh, permission blockchain environment with a focus to the proof of work based system in uh, Bitcoin network. And we have looked into that uh, how this proof of work based mining procedure uh, generates a consensus mechanism among uh, the different miners who are proposing new blocks and uh, make a tamper proof architecture of the entire blockchain. Uh, so, in today's lecture, we will uh, explore that further and we will look into the different tasks of the miner and uh, what are the incentives to the miner to participate in this mining procedure and uh, that mining procedure how motivate them uh, to employ some kind of uh, economical properties or economical feature in the environment uh, to control the entire mining procedure. Uh, so, let us uh, look into the details of the Bitcoin miners. So, Uh, well, so the life of a miner of something like this, so their task is to validate the transaction and then construct a new block. Once they have constructed a new block, then employ their hash power uh, to vote on consensus, vote on consensus in the sense like um, to find out that uh, who is going to uh, complete the work first and then accordingly propose that block as a new block and commit the transactions in that new block uh, and add that new block to the existing blockchain and then store and broadcast that new blockchain to the peers. So, that way the entire blockchain gets propagated in the network. So, uh, this mining Bitcoin, the entire procedure has six different steps. So, the first step is that to, if you want to be a miner, you have to join in the Bitcoin network and listen for the transactions, uh, then validate the proposed transactions which are coming from the client. So, the next step is to listen for the new blocks, uh, validate those new blocks and broadcast a new block when it is proposed. So, if you are getting a new block from one of, an, of your peer, then you validate that new block and rebroadcast it in the network. Then, uh, collect the transactions for a predefined time and construct a new block uh, with that uh, transactions the transactions which are not already included in the blockchain. So, as a miner you take those transactions and construct a new block. Then your task is to participate in the mining procedure where your task is to find out a nonce uh, to make the block valid by uh, utilizing the predefined difficulty function for that. That means, having certain minimum number of zeros at the prefix of the obtained has value. So, you have to generate the nonce according to that which is the mining procedure. So, once you have got a new block, uh, you broadcast that new block uh, to your peers and uh, everybody in your peering system, they will accept that block uh, if it is part of the main chain. So, this concept we have uh, discussed earlier because uh, in a typical blockchain environment, it may happen that uh, uh, multiple blocks are generated together. So, you had a block earlier. So, assume that this is the blockchain, this is the longest chain, every block is pointing to the previous block by the nonce and then at this, so this is at time instance T1, this is at time instance T2, this is at time instance T3 and then at time instance T4, two miners have found out a same block. If two miners have found out the same block and both are the valid blocks, then they uh, propose those blocks uh, to the peers and if both are valid block, they get propagated. So, the idea is there, here I am just trying to draw a Bitcoin network where you have multiple peers. Now, assume that this is one miner and this is another miner. So, this miner has say found out block, I am naming this block as B1, B2, B3, B4 and B5. So, this miner has found out block B4. 
this miner has found out block B5. So, this miner will broadcast this B4 block to its peers, then this peer will again broadcast this B4 block. Similarly, this particular miner it will start broadcasting B5 block and this intermediate node uh, it will get certain number of B4 blocks and certain number of B5 blocks. So, it will accept the block uh, which it has received from more number of peers. So, it has say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different peers. So, if it receives B5 from say it has received B5 from 3 peers and it has received B4 from 2 peers, then this minor it will uh, accept the block that it has received from maximum number of peers and rebroadcast that block. So, that way uh, this the next block say which is getting generated say B6 it is say B5 is now getting propagated and this minor it has say this minor it has received uh, uh, this minor it has it has received um, uh, the block B5 it has accepted block B5 and after accepting block B5 uh, it is it has got successful in generating block B6. Now, it adds up this block B6 with B5. So, now at instance T5. So, now this, this becomes B1, B2, B3, B5, B6. This becomes the longest chain in the network and uh, this particular block chain is utilized and the additional block that we had earlier we call this is a fork and this particular block it is not getting added further. So, these blocks are not become the part of the main chain. So, this, this chain is termed as the main chain, this is termed as the main chain in the blockchain network and this block before it uh, the block before it uh, does not become part of this main chain. So, we call this block as the orphan block, orphan block. So, that way the entire blockchain gets uh, propagated in the network. Okay. So, uh, this way the block get broadcasted in the network and whenever the miner has found out a new block by participating in the mining procedure they earn certain reward for participating in the mining procedure. And this individual thing runs in different rounds. So, at every time instance you are generating new blocks one after another. Now, uh, we have a term called mining difficulty. So, this mining difficulty it is a measure of how difficult it is to find a hash below a given target. So, uh, it should be fine to find the hash below a given target. Uh, so, if you remember the mining procedure, the mining procedure says that uh, we are going to generate a 256 bit hash function and uh, we say that uh, there is a mining difficulty, the difficulty represented in this way that uh, well out of this 256 bit hash the first 64 bit should be 0. So, at least first 64 bit would be 0. So, this says that well you have to generate a hash function where uh, in the final hash result at least first 64 bit uh, should be 0 and after that the remaining bits can be 0s and 1s. So, this is the difficulty of the mining procedure and based on that we define a metric called mining difficulty. Uh, so, we have a concept called mining pool that we will discuss later the mining pools also have a pool specific shear difficulty. Now, this difficulty parameter I am going to discuss uh, the mathematical formulation of this difficulty parameter. So, this difficulty parameter it changes for every 2016 blocks. So, our desired rate is that we want to generate one block each at 10 minutes. So, at every 10 minute my target is to generate a new block. Now, if you uh, try to generate a new block at every 10 minute uh, and if you do the computation in that way you will find out that well to generate 
2016 blocks you required exactly two weeks. So within two weeks you can generate 2016 blocks. So this difficulty level it is readjusted at every two weeks. So at every two weeks you find out that how many blocks you have generated, uh, whether you have generated uh, two, 2016 blocks in less than two weeks time of duration, they, that means the difficulty is going to be too simple for the miners. Uh, so you increase the difficulty and if you finding out that well, the miners are taking more than um, two weeks of duration to generate 2016 blocks, then it means that that current difficulty is going to be too hard for the miners. So you reduce the difficulty in that way. So with this idea in mind, so we define difficulty or we set the difficulty by utilizing this formula. So you compute the difficulty at every two weeks uh, or, or you, can, you can just uh, recompute the difficulty after every 2016 blocks have been generated. So you can compute it on either every two weeks or uh, after 2016 blocks are generated. So our expectation is that within two weeks we want to generate 2016 blocks so that inter block generation time becomes equal to 10 minutes. So we set the difficulty in this way so the current difficulty will be previous difficulty the difficulty that was earlier multiplied by two weeks in millisecond the total two weeks duration divided by milliseconds to mine the last 2016 blocks. So that means if you are taking less time to mine 2016 blocks compared to two weeks, uh, then you are going to uh, increase the current difficulty. So if you, if you uh, can generate 2016 block faster, that means uh, the current difficulty is going to be too easy for the miner. So you increase the difficulty level. If you are taking more time compared to two weeks um, to generate this 2016 blocks, that means this time, uh, this milliseconds to mine last 2016 block, this terminology becomes more than two weeks equivalent in millisecond. Uh, if you are taking more time than two weeks, that means the mining is becoming too hard. So you reduce the current difficulty level. So that way the Bitcoin network dynamically changes the difficulty level. Now let us look into that how this difficulty level is related to the hash rate. That means how many hash you can perform. Now the hash that we are going to generate as you are using double SHA 256 uh, for generating the hash function. So this hash is a random number between 0 and 2 to the power 256 minus 1. So to find a block our objective is the hash must be less than a given target. Uh, so we offset the difficulty level 1 as 0 at 0 FFFF into 2 to the power 208. That means out of the 256 blocks, we are saying that um, the uh, initial 48 uh, bits we want as the 0 and the remaining bit we want uh, we as the 1, so that is the offset for difficulty 1. Now accordingly we define the offset for difficulty D is um, all 1s into 2 to the power 208 divided by D. Uh, so this many number of zeros for different values of D by doing this computation you can find out that how many zeros you uh, want at the beginning uh, that determines uh, the number of zeros that you want uh, at the beginning. Uh, the example that I have given for difficulty level 1. So for difficulty level 1, we want that the 208 bits. So out of this uh, 256 bit, 256 uh, bit uh, hash, the 208 bits should be equal to, uh, can be either 1 or 0. Okay? So we have a control over uh, this 48 bit, we want that this initial 48 bit should be all zeros. Um, so, so that is for the uh, difficulty level 1. Accordingly, we define the difficulty level D, the number of uh, initial bits that we want. So the expected number of hashes we need to calculate to find a block with difficulty D is something equal to uh, D into 2 to the power 256 divided by uh, this offset. 
So, that means, uh, it, it comes to be uh, d into 2 to the power uh, 48 divided by uh, this offset value. Uh, so, that is the expected number of hashes that uh, you need to perform. So, this difficulty level dynamically changes the amount of hash uh, that uh, you want to do. So, if you if you are providing more difficulty that then, so if you increase the value of d, uh, if you are providing more difficulty value, so you have to generate more number of hashes to get the resultant target. Well, so uh, this is the current mining difficulty as of uh, 2nd April 2018. Uh, so, this, this large number represents the current difficulty level uh, for a blockchain network, uh, for a Bitcoin network. Okay. So, if you look into that uh, how difficulty level has changed over time, uh, so this curve uh, gives you that uh, how the difficulty level uh, uh, changes uh, got changed over time. So, you can see that uh, uh, mostly from January 15 to uh, the current time, we have a sharp increase in the difficulty level. So, later on we will see that uh, presently more and more miners are coming with uh, higher hardware or, or high power hardwares to uh, mine the blocks. So, that way the mining has become more faster nowadays. So, to control that, uh, the Bitcoin network has gradually increased the difficulty and we can see a, a certain sharp in increase in the difficulty level in the uh, last uh, few months, where uh, a large number of miners have participated in the mining procedure with, uh, uh, with specialized mining hardwares. So, as I have mentioned, there are multiple uh, specialized mining hardwares which are available nowadays in the market. Uh, so, initially people have started doing the mining on the standard computer, then they have find out that well, by participating in the Bitcoin mining procedure, you can get um, uh, more benefit, you can get more reward and you can earn Bitcoin. Uh, so, the miners, they have started developing uh, hardwares for that and um, uh, initially people have moved from the CPU based hardware to the uh, graphic processing unit GPU based hardwares and gradually recently they have moved to the hardware based on FPGA boards. So, this diagram actually shows you a uh, hardware with uh, multiple FPGA boards. Uh, so, then uh, in 2013, uh, uh, so we had this ASIC based uh, uh, mining hardware, the full form is of ASIC is application specific, uh, application specific integrated circuit. application specific integrated circuit. So, this ASIC was designed to perform uh, this SHA 256 hash in a faster way. So, if you remember that in Bitcoin mining procedure, we apply SHA 256 this bit hash function. So, to uh, increase the mining speed, what you have to do that you have to generate more number of hashes uh, per unit time. So, this uh, ASIC, uh, the first ASIC was released in 2013. Uh, for this first computation of SHA 256 based uh, uh, bit uh, hash function. And this diagram is uh, for a uh, mining hardware corresponds to uh, this ASIC uh, design. So, here is an uh, use case uh, which we called as the Terraminer 4. Uh, so, this Terraminer 4 is a ASIC based uh, Bitcoin mining rig uh, which is has multiple such uh, FPGA boards inbuilt. Uh, which uh, can perform fast computation of uh, uh, hash function. It can perform uh, 2 tera hash uh, per second, um, uh, that many number of hash it can perform. So, you can imagine that uh, how many number of such 256 uh, bit SHA 256 hash function it can perform and the current cost uh, for this hardware is approximately 3500 US dollar. But uh, nowadays, even this hardware is not sufficient, people have started building up mining pool or combination of multiple hardwares together to uh, perform uh, these mining uh, operations. Well, uh, the point that I mentioned that the mining pool, uh, it is an interesting concept in uh, blockchain network and Bitcoin network. So, the idea of this mining pool is that you combine multiple miners together, the resources available from multiple miners together 
and uh, then you ask the miner to generate the hash in a distributed way. Uh, so every miner will start to generate the hash for a block and uh, they will basically share their processing power uh, over the network to mine a new block. Uh, so the broad idea can be explained uh, with an example. So let me uh, show you an example of uh, that. So you have a pool controller or sometime we'll, we call it as pool organizer who is uh, whose task is uh, to construct or propose a new block. So the pool organizer say has constructed a new block with multiple transactions and the task would be, so this is a new block that has been constructed by the pool organizer and uh, the pool organizer has constructed the new block and the task is to find out the nonce for this block. Now there are multiple miners say M1, M2, M3 and M4. So you have multiple miners. So the pool organizer uh, informs this new block to all the miners and ask them to find out the hash value corresponds to that. Now what happens every miner independently tries to find out this nonce value and uh, whenever they are finding out the nonce value say assume that uh, the current uh, difficulty level ask for uh, say, uh, say 5 uh, say 20 leading zeros, 20 leading zeros at the prefix. say this is the current mining difficulty. Uh, if this is the current mining difficulty, then what individual miner can do? They can try to find out uh, um, the hash value where there are approximately uh, 20 leading zeros at the prefix. So uh, the miners can uh, propose something called a share. So what is a share here? Like uh, whenever the miners are generating the blocks, the miners will generate blocks something like say they can generate the block something like 2, D, 5, 6, something like that. Here I do not have 5, uh, 20 leading zeros, so this is in hex. So this 4 zero signifies for um, 16 leading zeros. Uh, so in this case, this is a kind of we call this kind of hashes as a near optimal hash. So these are kind of near optimal hash. So this near optimal hash ensures that well this particular block is not the optimal one that is intended for but this particular miner is close to optimal. So that way this miner also forwards this near optimal uh, blocks to the pool organizer as well as the block which is optimal. So if the miner can find out uh, a hash, one of the miner can find out a hash where you have at least 20 leading zeros, I should mention it as at least, at least 20 leading zeros at the prefix, then that is the solution. So assume that M2 has, we are able to find out such a block and M2 is sharing this block with uh, pool organizer and M3 was say able to find out three such near optimal hash values which are closer to the original hash value and M4 was able to find out uh, uh, two such uh, has value. Uh, so the idea is that uh, the way they have participated uh, in this mining procedure. So whenever all these four miners, they are trying to collectively find out uh, the nonce value for a single block, the probability that one of them will be able to find it out, it becomes higher compared to if a single miner tries to find out uh, the has value for the uh, entire block. So that way, um, uh, this mining pool concept, it can uh, increases the probability of uh, getting a new block and at the same time this near optimal solutions that every miner is sharing with the pool organizer, from this near optimal solution the pool organizer can decide that how much work has been done by individual miners. So this miner was able to send uh, two uh, such near optimal solution. So the idea is that whenever you are paying uh, to this miner, you say uh, pay uh, 5 
uh, say 2 dollar uh, to this miner. This miner was able to uh, generate one year optimal solution. So, you pay 1 dollar to this miner. This one was able to generate 3 year optimal solution. So, you pay 3 dollar to this one. This one able to generate 2 year optimal solution. So, you pay to pay 2 dollar uh, to this miner. So, that way the total block reward that the pool organizer is getting that particular block reward can be shared by uh, multiple miners who are participating in the mining pool. Okay. So, that is the broad uh, concept of mining pool and here is a distribution of uh, multiple pools which are there in the today's Bitcoin network. So, this btc.com and pool, uh, btc.top via btc they actually uh, takes a huge share of the mining pool and uh, uh, one of the interesting statistics uh, that I can show you. So, well uh, in this uh, blockchain.info website you can see uh, you can you can see uh, the latest blocks which are being generated by uh, multiple uh, multiple uh, miners who have actually generated the block and uh, this is the height of the block. So, uh, currently the Bitcoin blockchain has this many number of blocks 516279 uh, number of blocks. So, if I go to see more. So, you can see uh, all the blocks here. So, you can find out that most of these blocks are relayed by some of the mining pool. So, this block was relayed by btc.top, then btc.com, then via btc, then via btc, btc.com, via btc. So, you can see that via btc has um, relayed this 1, 2, 3 block, btc.com has relayed this block, this block, uh, sorry not uh, this block, btc.com has relayed this block this block uh, then again this block. So, that means most of the blocks have been uh, generated by some of the uh, block uh, some of the mining pools. So, they are collectively able to generate the new blocks and uh, share the money among themselves. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, look into that uh, how the shares are distributed among uh, different miners in a mining pool. Uh, so, in a mining pool there can be hundreds or thousands of miners uh, who communicate with each other through some special protocols that uh, I have discussed earlier. So, assume that uh, capital B is the block reward minus pool free. So, every pool has whenever you are participating to some mining pool you have to give uh, some fee for that and uh, B is the block reward minus the pool fee the effective reward that you are getting and P is the probability of finding a block in a shared atom whenever multiple miners are trying to do that. And if D is the block difficulties then you can say that 1 by D is the uh, probability for finding a block. Now, we have multiple mechanism like uh, uh, for distributing the share one is called the paper share in paper share architecture you have instant guaranteed payout to a miner. Uh, so, whenever a miner is joining in the mining pool, you pay the miner uh, from the pool's existing balance and share of the miner is calculated as uh, B times uh, P. So, this constant amount of uh, money is given to uh, every individual miner who is joining in the pool. And uh, in this particular architecture, paper share, the miners get almost equal pay payment. Uh, but the risk is at the pool operator. So, it may happen that uh, the pool is not able to find out any new block, but because this is a kind of instant payment and a guaranteed payment to the uh, participant or to the miners who are participating in this pool, uh, it may always happen that the pool uh, is not getting any reward, they are not able to mine any new block, but still the operator need to pay to the uh, individual miners who are there. Uh, then there are methods like uh, 
proportional uh, share in case of proportional share the miners earn share until the pool finds a block. Uh, so, at each of every mining round whenever the pool is finding out a block uh, you find out that what is the total share of uh, uh, the individual miners. So, the share by uh, share we mean the near optimal solution that the miners are able to find out. Uh, so, uh, assume that capital N is the uh, total amount of shares in the round and small n is the amount of the share of a particular minor. So, you divide the block reward uh, in proportional to the amount of share that has been generated uh, by the minor in this uh, current mining round. So, a mining round means uh, say at uh, say this is the time instant at this particular time instance uh, this pool has uh, pool generated a block generated a block and again say at T 1 at T 2 the pool has generated a new block. So, within this time duration we compute these shares and in proportion to that share uh, the total mining um, uh, reward is so, the pool is generated a new block means at this time the pool gets some reward B, uh, this uh, reward is distributed among uh, individual miners in the pool. Then uh, we have paper last 10 share PPLNS. In PPLNS method it is similar to the proportional uh, share. The only difference is that here in capital N uh, we are considering the amount of all shares in the round. Uh, in case of PP in the in the next method, we uh, we consider uh, only the last n share. So, among the last n share uh, how much share was uh, obtained by a particular miner and uh, uh, that way the miner get uh, more profit. Uh, so, in that way if your round is small that means, if you can quickly find out a new block. So, you will get more share in, in this particular paper uh, last n share method. Uh, so, the advantage of mining pool is that uh, small miners can participate uh, in a mining pool and you have a kind of predictable mining like uh, whenever uh, you have large amount of miners who are participating in the uh, mining procedure you can say that well there is a high probability that uh, the pool will be able to find out a new block. But the problem with uh, this kind of uh, architecture is that it leads to centralization. So, uh, if you if you look into uh, this um, this uh, uh, blockchain dot uh, info website and if you look into uh, these uh, blocks recent blocks which are being relayed by multiple miners you will find out that the same miners is relaying multiple blocks one after another. So, this btc dot com is uh, relaying uh, multiple blocks. Similarly, via BTC is also relaying multiple blocks. So, all the blocks that are getting relayed uh, they are actually coming from uh, they are they are coming from some fixed number of uh, mining pools either via BTC or uh, uh, say via BTC or uh, BTC dot com again via BTC. So, a notion of monopoly you can see in uh, can be seen uh, with uh, this architecture. And uh, it also discourages the miners from running the complete mining procedure because it may happen that the miner well if they have able to generate it some uh, four, um, uh, four uh, almost uh, complete uh, block or almost complete hash or near optimal hash they are happy that well they are going to get some amount of share. So, they may not participate further uh, in the future. Well, uh, in summary uh, in uh, uh, till now we have looked into the permissionless or the open uh, model for blockchain. Uh, so, we have looked into the permissionless or open model for blockchain where any user can join the network and participate in the transactions and Bitcoin is developed based on this principle. So, the blockchain it provides a backbone of the permissionless digital currency uh, by providing a decentralized architecture and uh, 
by providing architecture uh, which is tamper proof uh, with the help of hash chain based technology. And then this mining procedure in a permissionless blockchain, uh, it ensures the consensus in the system. Uh, so that is uh, the broad idea of uh, this uh, permissionless blockchain architecture. Uh, so in the next uh, week classes, we will start with another model of blockchain which is called a permission model of blockchain and we will see that how uh, traditional distributed system algorithm becomes more powerful for uh, permission blockchain environment and uh, then from there we will look into different application of blockchain uh, apart from the financial domain. Uh, so see you again during the next class and uh, thank you very much for attending.